Hi, and thank you for attending our presentation on Dallas Thermal Temperature Monitoring Solution. My name is Matt Bryant, and I work for Security Solutions, who is a manufacturer's rep firm for DAWA throughout most of the East Coast. Today, we will be discussing DAWA's latest thermal solution and its applications. Um, I do want to get a legal disclaimer out of the way, um, just so people can understand uh, exactly what we're working with, what we are, and what we aren't. Um, so the big thing, I'm going to read this line for line. For line um, and then I'll explain it a little bit further. So the Dow Thermal Temperature Monitoring Solution is not a medical device and is not designed or intended for diagnosis, prevention, or treatment of any disease or condition. The solution is a screening tool that businesses and households can use to identify individuals with elevated skin temperature compared to a customizable reference temperature on or entering their premises. Basically, to clarify, we are not a medical device of any kind, okay? All we are doing is providing that skin temperature, uh, providing that information to the business holder. And at that point in time, um, depending on what their standard operating procedure, their SOP is, um, they can either instruct that person to go seek medical uh, advice from their personal doctors, or if there's medical staff on premises, they can in, uh, send them to that medical uh, doctor on staff for further diagnosis. Uh, to clarify again, we are not uh, medically identifying anything. We're not treating, curing, um, whether this is you know, COVID-19, the flu, whatever it is, all we are doing is simply providing a skin temperature uh, in the form of information for the client so that they can then determine uh, what the best course of action is for them. Okay. So moving forward, obviously you guys understand, you know, the challenges that these guys are facing and these businesses are facing um, when they're uh, trying to uh, maintain day-to-day -day operations, right? That could be uh, retail, it could be distribution, it could be, uh, you know, restaurants, it could be any number of different things. And the challenge is, is, you know, not knowing if somebody comes in that may be asymptomatic or be running a fever knowingly or unknowingly and potentially putting employees or other guests in harm's way um, by potentially um, being contagious and passing that uh, on. So the challenge for most places and what they've been doing is individually uh, testing uh, temperatures as they're coming into a facility or business. Um, and as you can imagine, in retail, that would be next to impossible. Uh, in most businesses, it's very time consuming and very challenging. And one of the big downsides is it requires contact. Um, it requires close proximity for the individual to be near um, that person. So it's going to uh, open up the potential risk of that person um, getting contaminated or getting some something else that, uh, in a, um, that they don't want to have, right? So we're trying to make this a little bit more efficient, make it easier on everybody involved, um, so it's safer for everybody. Okay. So what DAWA is doing is providing a thermal solution that is a non-contact temperature detection solution. So what's happening is that we are able to provide an accuracy within a 0.54 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it is a non-contact, meaning that the uh, person that is screening the individuals coming in does not have to have any direct contact with the employees or guests or individuals that are coming into their business or facility, okay? Uh, it's low cost from a standpoint of you don't have to have as much manpower. You don't have to have all these individual screeners. You don't have to worry about the physical contact uh, or any potential risk uh, of people you know, having that uh, direct exposure. Um, this can be applied in multiple different opportunities as far as different retails, different facilities, different um, you know, correctional facilities, all kinds of different verticals. Um, so there's a lot of different uh, options for that standpoint. A lot of institutions that we're talking to understand that this is a temporary need right now, but are looking past the COVID-19 concern and looking at it as a more permanent solution uh, for future you know, measurement. Um, they're looking at it for a way to you know, handle employees and personnel coming into facilities on a long-term scale because, you know, COVID-19 is not the only uh, thing to be concerned about. There are other fevers. You look at flu seasons. You look at uh, other things that come up down the road uh, or planning for the next pandemic that may, you know, may occur whenever, right? So um, this is designed to be, a, you know, a temporary solution, but don't rule out the aspect of it being a more semi or permanent uh, installation uh, is, you know, changing their operating procedure and how they uh, go about doing things, okay? So the way the solution works 
is what you're going to do is you're going to have typically screened off areas where you're trying to reduce the number of entry exit locations. Uh, so what most institutions or retail or businesses are directing all employees or personnel or guests um, going through as few locations as possible. Uh, one would be the, you know, the object or the target, um, but you know, some institutions may have two or three or more depending on the facility. Um, the best analogy I can make of this is thinking of it like going through a security checkpoint at an airport. You know, everybody typically will file into a single file line, uh, go through individual screening stations. Well, typically you have somebody in a pre-screen area that's directing, instructing, and providing information to those individuals as needed. Um, then they're going to go through the detection area, uh, which in this case would be a thermal detection area rather than an X-ray or metal detector. You have somebody monitoring the information that's being gathered, uh, such as the person monitoring the X-ray machine. You'll be somebody monitoring those temperatures as they're coming through. Then you have somebody in the post-screening area that will either let them pass through or pull them aside if there was an uh, abnormally uh, or anomaly uh, detected. So what most people are doing is they're taking these, you know, X marks area or footprints or whatever it may be to kind of uh, encourage the social separation, the social distancing, so they maintain that proper distance while going through these checkpoints. Um, as somebody comes up, they're going to go through this temperature detection area, uh, which is a predetermined distance that we'll go through here in just a second. but uh, as they go through this detection area, you'll have a thermal camera that's aimed at that target. Um, that thermal camera provides two images. You get both a thermal image that you see right here on the right, and then you have a normal visible camera on the left. Um, you will have both of those overlaying at one time. It's a single uh, Category 5E or Category 6 cable or 6A uh, running from here to the recorder. This display is what's coming directly out of that recorder, okay? You will have a live screener of somebody physically manning that uh, recorder and monitor so they can see uh, what is going on real time. You'll also have this black body device that's right here. What that provides is a temperature reference point. Uh, it is not wired into the system. It just simply plugs into uh, 110 or AC power um, and provides a temperature reference point. Uh, it's like a heat plate that then heats up to 95 degrees. You can actually see it right here on the image in the background. You'll see it in this live image. On this thermal image, you'll see it as that little hot, you know, orange square box, uh, and that provides that reference point, and that is what enables us to get the accuracy that we have. Without that device, the 0.54 increases to several degrees plus or minus, uh, which really makes it unusable uh, for this application. So it is important to have that part of the solution to maintain the accuracy. If there is an alert or an alarm, and that alarm is set by the end user. So they'll determine, hey, we want this alarm to go off after 100.5 degrees or 100 degrees or whatever that number may be. We, during our setup and demo here, actually set it up for 97 degrees. That way we can properly have alarms without people that were having temperatures involved. Um, so we had it set for 97. So anybody over 97 were to trip the alarm. So what will happen for the customers, they'll see a live face uh, associated. They'll have an alarm that says high temperature. They'll have the temperature read out on this screen as well so they can see it. Um, this will be tied directly to a recording of that event. So if something uh, were to be questioned or they wanted to go back and look at what happened when the person walked through, um, they can click right on this space and it would actually go back and play back that event uh, utilizing the hard drive involved. Some customers do not want to have that hard drive. They don't want any recordings. It is possible to remove the hard drive and simply have it as a live notification solution. But keep in mind, there will be no video archives uh, or history of that event. Um, so keep that in mind when doing that. Um, once they, you know, detect that uh, high temperature alarm, uh, then that at that time, depending on what the SOP is for the customer, or for, I'm sorry, the end user, um, that may be having them go to an isolation area where if there's medical staff on board, they can further treat or diagnose the person with proper medical equipment. Or in a retail environment, they say, hey, you know, I'm sorry, we can't have you come in today, uh, put our customers at risk. Uh, we all have to ask you to go seek, you know, shelter, medical attention, whatever it may be, whatever that operating procedure is determined by the end user, okay? Um, they'll also see a notification come through on the camera. This is an option. Uh, the camera has an LED on the front display of it uh, that will flash to notify that, hey, there was an alarm tripped. Um, there's also an audible siren on that thermal camera as well. Those can be disabled if you don't want the flash and you don't want the siren or you want one or the other. That's customizable by the install installer. 
um, or you know, at the reference of the uh, end user, whatever they want. So that is adjustable by whomever is installing the system. Okay. Uh, a couple big things to take note of. Um, so from a cabling standpoint, we talked about the thermal camera will have a category cable that runs from it to the NBR. Uh, as mentioned, it is both cameras come through a single category cable. It will take up two channels on this recorder. Um, so one cable, two channels because of the two imagers. Uh, as mentioned, the black body device does not wire directly into any of these devices. It typically wires in, or it will wire direct, uh, directly into an AC outlet, okay? Um, the optional uh, options on here are such as external audible visual notifications. So there are alarm inputs and outputs on both the camera and the recorder. So if the customer would like to have a remote notification uh, option, such as the business owner or manager uh, or systems engineer or whatever it may be, maybe in an office somewhere else, but they want to have a notification if there's somebody that comes in with an alarm, uh, we can utilize those external inputs and outputs to wire to an external relay with a power supply that will power an LED or siren uh, located wherever that may be in the facility. Um, those are options not included that would be up to the installer to provide a labor cost and install cost for that equipment. Um, for third party integration, uh, as mentioned earlier, this is something that is not going to be integrated into any third party VMS solution. You must utilize our camera um, our recorder and our black body device to uh, provide the full solution. So uh, there is low level third party integration with access control systems or VMS systems via contact closure. Um, so if you want to do a, there's an existing VMS in place, uh, you know, whatever manufacturer it may be, if they have a physical alarm input, you can utilize one of our alarm outputs to wire to that input uh, to be notified. So it doesn't send any metadata, there's no temperatures, there's no faces, there's no anything coming through that other than just a contact closure saying that there was an alarm. So they will be able to tie it into the third party that way, but nothing else. Um, you can also tie it into access control. We've had certain end users request that they put the system on lockdown if somebody were to come through the entrance point with a temperature. Um, that is something that would need to be discussed with the installer. Uh, and something that would need to be verified that the access control system can support that type of feature. Uh, but the way that would look is you'd wire an output to that uh, input on the access control. You would program the access con control to say when this input is triggered, do a shutdown, um, and on, on the pro there'd be a little bit of programming on the um, DAWA side as well. So when an alarm is tripped, fire that output. Um, that is something absolutely capable of being doing, just obviously verify what access control systems in place so we can see if there is a possibility on their side. Um, distances to take note of, uh, distance between a camera and a black body device. So between these two, needs to be just under 10 feet at 9.8 feet. Um, that's to maintain the most accuracy or the highest level of accuracy in the system. Also between the camera and the person being detected, um, it'll be 9.8 feet from that as well. So from the face of the camera to the detection area. Um, ideally, you know, that's the perfect distance. If they're going to be further away, the temperatures are going to appear to be colder. If they're closer than that, the temperatures are going to appear to be hotter than they should be. So to maintain the accuracy, this is the target distance that needs to be met uh, in order to give the most accurate uh, results. The other thing is the field of view width for that thermal camera at that distance is about 4.3 feet. Um, so meaning that this is more of a single channel, you know, single, uh, I'm sorry, single line um, type solution, you're not going to be monitoring a 40 by 40 room with 100 people in it. It's just not, it's not designed to do that. Uh, this would require you to have a choke point, kind of like a serpentine line or an individual line, just like a, a airport. Okay. So keep that in mind during the installation. Um, so a couple little things to expand on with the cameras. As mentioned earlier, this is a, probably a little bit better shot. You can see that LED right there on the uh, front side of it. Uh, as mentioned, there's a siren underneath. Uh, it is a 400 by 300 resolution uh, thermal sensor and is a two megapixel visible light imager on there as well. Uh, it's 13 millimeter on the lens for the thermal, eight millimeter on the uh, IP camera, the traditional visible camera. Uh, there's some other features on here that can be used for other opportunities outside of the temperature detection, uh, but that is something that will be uh, discussed with the uh, sales rep at that time to see if there's anything that you guys would need in addition to that. 
Um, you do have the alarm inputs and outputs, as mentioned, it can be used for various third-party integrations. Okay. Flat body device, very straightforward. As mentioned, it's just a heating plate. Uh, something to do take note of is once this thing is powered up, it does take a little bit, uh, a matter of minutes to heat this plate up. Um, so if the customer was keeping this as a mobile solution, moving it from point to point, um, it would need to be allowed a few minutes to heat up before they could start passing uh, individuals through the, uh, the camera feed. Uh, we had ours powered off overnight for about 12 hours um, last week when we were doing our testing. Uh, it only took about five minutes to heat up from uh, complete um, cold. So obviously that time frame will depend upon the relative temperature in the room that it's being stored in. But like I said, we're talking a matter of minutes, not hours. So um, a couple big notes for installation as well on that note uh, would be to make sure that this is not used outside. Uh, this would need to be used in an indoor temperature controlled environment. Uh, we would also recommend that this not have any visible doorways uh, with outside temperatures uh, exposing to the imager because it could uh, cause adverse effects or adverse readings in the system. So the ideal solution would be uh, controlling this so where the doorway is not in view of that camera. Um, as referenced in the screenshot earlier, we had ours about 30 feet away from a doorway. We only saw about half the doorway and there was no issues there. Uh, but that is something that we need to take note of when doing deployments is just make sure that we are not putting this in view of that uh, doorway so we can avoid any potential issues. Okay. Um, the recorder, it's a very traditional IP recorder for us, but it has the specific analytics to support what we're doing with this camera. Um, this is the only recorder in our product family that will support uh, those features. So even though it is 16 channel, uh, you could put eight thermal cameras on there and get 16 views. However, this only supports up to four channels of facial detection or face recognition, which is the core technology being used to tie this in. So although you could put eight cameras on there, we only do a max of four. I will say it is recommended to have one of these per entry exit location. If you try and put these things on you know, a central location and have multiple entry exits throughout a facility uh, put on there, um, it's going to be a challenge for that person to process all of that information coming at one time. So if you have hundreds of people or you know, even a handful of people coming through at one time through multiple entry exit points, it's going to be a challenge to be able to process that information fastly and then relay it to these screening stations. So it is recommended per entry exit to have one of these recorders uh, with one monitor connected to that so that they can be properly screened quickly without any delays in information or um, being relayed back and forth. Okay, it does have 16 POE ports. So if you do want to have other cameras tied into this throughout the facility or just overview monitoring cameras for the uh, station, they can do that as well. Um, just keep that in mind of when you're doing the setup and labor that you know, account for those cameras being mounted to that recorder. A lot of guys have been putting these things on carts and just wheeling them out as a mobile solution. They'll have the tripod set up for the cameras for the black body and the thermal. Um, and keep it as a mobile deployment that can be you know, turned on and turned off at the beginning or end of the day uh, and moved as necessary. So kind of the full solution, all the components, parts, and pieces that are needed for this. Um, you're going to have the black body device itself. Uh, these are all MSRP pricing. Um, this is not dealer cost, so uh, dealer cost would be, be able to be provided by your distributor. Um, but the black body device would be, um, you know, obviously you would need one of those. We need one thermal camera. Um, during the initial setup, you'll need an external power supply for that camera when you connect it to your laptop for configuration. Um, so you do need this during setup, but it will not be needed after that setup is done. Um, once the setup is done, you plug the camera directly into the NVR with the CAT cable, uh, and that will give you um, everything you need through that one cable. Uh, we are encouraging the tripods and mounting plates for the installs as well. You'll need two tripods, one tripod per uh, black body and one per thermal. And then these mounting plates convert the mounting of the tripod to mount to these camera devices. The same for either one. So you need two of these as well, one per black body and one per thermal. Obviously, you would need the recorder as well to wire them back to. Um, so you just need one per check in point. You can have multiple cameras, as mentioned, to go to that. Just be careful of the application. Um, we, you need a monitor for the system. Um, so we sell a 43-inch, 32-inch, or a 22-inch. Um, you can use, there's nothing proprietary, it is an HDMI or VGA. Um, you can use either or, or you can use both. They are mirrored outputs, so they can go to two TVs and it will show the same thing. 
um, but you do need a monitor to view the system to view the notifications and alerts, okay? Uh, applications, you know, obviously I know, um, you know, retail is a big one that a lot of guys are looking at, obviously, for this application as well. Uh, but there are obviously other opportunities with this, with mass transit, airport, railways. Um, you know, you look at uh, bus stations, stuff like that, where they're still processing a lot of uh, employees and personnel and guests. Uh, hospital, you know, healthcare, look at elderly care, senior living, stuff like that. Uh, food distribution, correctional institutions. Uh, anywhere where there's deemed essential and still having to maintain uh, employees, you know, we're looking at car manufacturing plants. It's kind of all over the map right now uh, where people are looking at using this, either in a temporary fashion or a semi-permanent uh, fashion. So a lot of different opportunities depending on the market. Uh, one other big thing to take note is due to increased demand right now, um, obviously with the need for everybody uh, using this thing, uh, all orders will have a 30-day ETA from date of order being processed. Uh, we are targeting quicker than that, <clears throat> but realistically, we're having to uh, say 30 days. It's one of these things we'd rather under-promise and over-deliver. Um, it may be sooner, but you need to accommodate and plan for a 30-day turnaround time um, to receive the product. So that's the, the gist of the presentation. I do want to go through and show a video here real fast, just so you can kind of see this thing working uh, real time. So the first one I'm going to show you is the one that we did at our office, um, so you can kind of see this functioning in real time. Um, this was a, 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 we actually took a monitor output from the DVR directly into our laptops with the capture card, so you can see exactly what it would look like from the recorder, uh, which you'll see, you'll see a couple individuals walking right up through here through the uh, hallway. You see the black body device on the screen right here, and you can see how it's mapped out on the thermal side. And then over here on the right side, you'll see the notifications pop up as the individuals cross through. Let me hit play on that. You'll see as they walk up, the temperatures will alarm, and you'll get notifications over here on the side if they are deemed a high temperature. Um, at that point in time, if it's determined that you guys want to do playback, uh, here's another video of that where you can actually see the playback function and working. This is a, a few different uh, people coming through at one time. This is about the speed. Uh, in quantity that we would suggest just to maintain social distancing, uh, but you can get more through there at one time if you need to. As mentioned, click on the cell on the right side. It will go through the playback right on the recorder so they can do an instant playback, but that would require a hard drive uh, to perform this function. If there's no hard drive, they would obviously not get the uh, archive video. That's Michael Stewart right there in case you were wondering. Um, but that guy, that, that guy should be a model. I'm going to disagree, but okay. <laughs> this is uh, this is another pretty cool video. Uh, I'm going to kind of scrub through a few things here. This was actually taken uh, in Poland, um, but what you'll be able to see is a line and basically a caravan of individuals coming through here just to show kind of the rapid ability to be able to detect multiple temperatures at the same time. Um, and then what I'm going to do is kind of scrub through here. You'll see different scenarios, people wearing masks, you know, beanies, even motorcycle helmets. Um, and even people with coffee and stuff like that, so you can kind of see the accuracy of the system. So this is international, so that's why it's in Celsius, but uh, you can see the overlay here. You'll have both images up live, but you'll be able to see all the different individuals coming through here with the temperatures, being able to detect all of those. I would not recommend something like this from an actual deployment just due to uh, the volume of alerts coming through uh, and the proximity of individuals next to each other. We would encourage further separation just to maintain safety. Um, but as you can see through here, um, when they go through with a mask and a hat, you can see full face mask, full hat, uh, still able to accurately read those temperatures. As long as the forehead is exposed, we still have the ability to be able to detect that temperature. Um, one important thing to note is this is tied into a facial detection analytic. So it is actually looking for a person's face and not just any hot object in the image. So this is an example of somebody with glasses, full head, uh, beanie on with a full face mask, and you can see the hot cup of coffee. It's showing white hot like it's supposed to in the thermal, but it is not tripping because it is looking for that facial tie-in um, to do the temperature, not just an inanimate object. So you can see the accuracy here is pretty profound. It's a really robust solution, but um, it is something that we definitely are pretty proud of. So again, just wanted to thank you all for taking the time to attend our training today. 
Please look at the Security Solutions map on the screen to find your local contact for Security Solutions who can answer any follow-up questions you may have, as well as provide personal virtual meetings for you and your clients. Thank you and have a great day.